Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we've got another exciting topic for you. Here on the desk, I have my IBM PC convertible, and we're gonna connect it to the internet. So basically, we're gonna look at a couple of different things. First, I'm gonna show you the hardware that it takes to do this. And we're gonna look at this with a couple of different pieces of hardware. And second, we're then going to have a surprise in store after we connect up and show you these different demonstrations. There's going to be a special demonstration, so you're definitely going to want to stick around for that. And since we're covering the PC convertible, I thought it was appropriate today that I wear my IBM t-shirt. And I learned about this t-shirt thanks to another YouTuber, and we're going to give that YouTuber a quick shout out. My friend over at IBM Museum has daily PC videos that he puts out covering various IBM PS2 and related systems. And it's very impressive because not only does he show you the good, he also shows you the process to get to the good. So I definitely recommend you head over there and check out the channel and subscribe. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. All right, so without further ado, let's get to it. I'll start out by showing you the hardware that we're going to use today. So let's take a minute to look exactly at how this is wired up. First of all, on the right hand side, you can see we have a Zircom Pocket Etherlink 3 connected with power and Ethernet cable. Then over here on the left hand side, we can see we have a 25 to 9 pin adapter connected to my serial to Wi-Fi modem, and it is getting power from an external source here. And here we have a close up of the serial to Wi-Fi modem. You can see the power connection here, and here is the modem. I do have a 3D case for it, but not currently uh, in its case, as you can see. And of course, we have the 25 to 9 pin adapter. If we flip this over, you can see what things look like on the other side. This is a really cool device. If you haven't seen my video on this device, I suggest you check it out and get one for yourself, because these are a lot of fun to have. And here we have the Zircom Pocket Etherlink 3 pocket ethernet adapter. I absolutely love these. I have several of them. On one side, we have a parallel connection. And on the other side, we have a ethernet RJ45 jack and a power connector. And there's even a power connector for these that allows you to connect directly to a PS2 port if you have a PS2 port from which you can leach power. And I also love the way these connect. The way that you spin the screws to connect these is by spinning this little wheel in the center. I always thought that was a cool design. These are kind of hard to find, but they're great. As I noted, I absolutely love these. I use these on my AST Premium Exec laptop, my Packard Bell Legend Supreme, and also on my Tandy 1000HX, all machines that have limited or no internal expansion. So these are definitely great to have. Unfortunately, they're pricey. Uh, so if you find one for cheap that is a RJ45 connection and not a 10 base 2 because there's plenty of those, but if you do find one, I suggest picking it up. And here we have the expansion module to add parallel and serial to the PC convertible. And what you'll see on this side is where we actually connect into the bus of the convertible, as well as some clips for keeping this module in place. And if we look on the back, we see a place where we can daisy chain to additional devices for example, there was a printer for the PC convertible, so there's that. And then you look at this module and you look at all the sides and you say, where the heck are the parallel and serial adapters? I don't see them anywhere. Well, they're on the sides. <laughs> and the reason for that is, well, you can't exactly put them on the front or the back because that's gonna be covered up once you hook the module in. So we have the serial on that side. And then on the other side, we have the parallel. So. That's where you can find them, and when plugged in, this works quite well. And next, let's have a look at getting online using Michael Brutman's Telnet as a part of his MTCP package. So to get started here, I've booted up the system using my trusty DOS 6.22 slash games disk. And the reason we have so much on a disk here is because, well, we only have two disk drives for storage, so there you have it. And in drive B, I have a disk 
with Michael Brutman's MTCP Telnet on it, as well as Telex, and also a packet driver for the Zircom Pocket Etherlink 3. So in order to use Telnet, first I need to load the packet drivers for the Zircom card. So to do that, we can type PE3PD and press enter. And we'll notice that the driver loads and attaches to interrupt 60 as we see here. So that's great. At this point, we can proceed to load the MTCP Telnet software. However, in order to make this simple, I do have a series of batch files. Principally, we have this Telnet bat, which we will be loading. Let's have a look at it. And in there, we can see that it calls another file called config.bat before finally calling the Telnet executable to access the Raspberry Pi. So let's have a look at config.bat. And we can see that config.bat basically sets this MTCP CFG variable to use the tcp.cfg file. We can also have a look at that. And here we can see that we have a packet address, which matches the address up here, as well as some IP settings for address, netmask, gateway, and name server, as well as the maximum transmission unit for this card. Great. So with this, let's go ahead and load telnet. So to do that, I will type telnet.bat. And there we have it. Telnet's loaded. We're all ready to access the Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and log in. And there we are, logged into the Raspberry Pi. We can launch an email client like Mutt. And there we see some messages from the last time that we did a test with Mutt. Perfect. So another thing I just absolutely love to do at this point is exit out of Mutt and run other programs like we can run top. And here in a terminal window on the PC convertible, we can see the results of the processes running on the Raspberry Pi. How cool is that? So let's go ahead and exit out of this by hitting the Q key and then type exit. And MTCP's Telnet will return us to a command prompt. There you have it. Now let's take a few minutes and have a look at getting online to a BBS using a serial to Wi-Fi modem. Next up, let's look at Telex. So back on the command prompt, I'll just type Telex to launch it. I've already configured Telex to use a monochrome monitor or a non-color display, despite the fact that this is a CGA display. However, as I have found, the uh, grayscale of it is not particularly great, and we're better off using a monochrome mode. So let's see this launch. And after a little while here, we can see that Telex finally does launch. It does attempt to communicate with the modem. We can see the default uh, initiation page show up for the modem. I guess that's what we'd call it. Whenever the modem starts up, that's what you get. We also see Telex make an attempt to initialize the modem by setting some different registers. And that makes this modem extremely unhappy. So despite the error we see here, we're actually in good shape to go ahead and dial up a BBS, if you will. And one of the popular BBSs that still exists and is accessible via Telnet, if you will, is Empire of the Dragon. So let's go ahead and dial up Empire of the Dragon. To do that, we can type ATDT BBS.EOTD.com. And we'll see it fire up and check for ANSI. I'm going to choose one. And we're going to say that we can't display color ANSI graphics because, you know, PC convertible. And from there, we'll see the bulletin board start to load up. Now, one thing I have been noticing <laughs> running this on the PC convertible is occasion we drop some letters. And I think that might have to do with the very high baud rate that we have for this machine. 19200 over this serial port expansion maybe a bit much for it. Now the Wi-Fi to serial modem that I have, or rather the serial to Wi-Fi modem that I have, does have adjustments where you can change the maximum speed 
We're just gonna leave this alone for now, but that's definitely something I could work with later if I wanted to see if I could optimize this. So at this point, if we wanted, we could type new and create a new account. I don't think I'm gonna go through all of the steps here, but you can see more items load and you can choose once again, the connection method you want to use if it's either ANSI or RIP and you can indicate whether or not you can display color. And then from there, you're gonna be presented with an opportunity to put in your information and create an account. So there you have it on a BBS over wireless over serial in the year 2021 on an IBM PC convertible. Let's go ahead and exit back to the command prompt at this point by doing an Alt X and that'll get us out of Telex. And finally, it's time for the surprise. Let's have a look. So now that we've connected over ethernet and over serial to Wi-Fi, I'd like to show a special use case over ethernet. A little while back on the channel, we demonstrated connecting to the IBM Classroom LAN administration system. Well, given that this is an IBM PC, it only seems appropriate that we connect it up to that system. As such, I've prepared a very special boot disk, which should get us into that system. And I've labeled it appropriately the iClass Pocket Ethernet 3. And it's all set up to use this card to connect in. Let's go ahead and put it in the drive, reboot the system, and let's get on to all things iClass. Okay, there we are, booted up into IBM Classroom LAN Administration System. It's really a nice shade of blue, independent of the fact that it's a grayscale screen, I guess that we see dark grayscales as blue. Let's go ahead and log in. And I'm going to log in as the system administrator. And now you can see we're nice and logged in and there should be a nice cursor bar displayed in block bold across any given option. Right now it's right here. Unfortunately, given the contrast of this display, it is impossible to see. Perhaps if I set this up for a monochrome monitor, it will be a little easier. So all we can do at this point really is log out. So I'll hit L to do that and we'll be on our way. But I thought it's pretty neat that here we have showcased the IBM PC convertible connecting up to a Novell network displaying IBM Classroom LAN administration system. All right, well, that's what I had for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It sure was impressive to me to be able to get this PC convertible with its two 720 kilobyte floppy drives onto the internet. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content on the way. I release videos pretty much every week. So ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when the next video is available. If you like what you saw today, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up. If not, consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. As always, it's been a pleasure to have you along for the journey. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time, but until then, bye for now.